What up boys and welcome back to another video. So ever since I released the uh, news that I'm going to go back to like old dungeons and start making like these series that I used to make, I got a lot of positive response. So I just want to say thank you so much for that. I'm really hyped. I've had a lot of fun doing this and I think it's going to be way, way more fun in the future. So the first one that I managed to finish up was RFD. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the dungeon to show you guys the way that I farm it because I remember in the past when I made the 100 runs videos there was a lot of people asking okay but what route do you do how do you farm it and so on and I had to like kind of tell them to go and watch my previous video and how to farm it and it was a hassle so I'm just gonna do like a quick run to show you guys my route and tell you uh, a couple of tricks alongside the way and then we're gonna jump into the amount of loot that I got on uh, the 100 runs of RFD so I do this on my road. You guys can do this on any class because RFD is a dungeon that's done really, really fast. It's not that long, but I do it on my road because number one, he has the legendary boots, which will uh, give me uh, a 25% movement speed. And that's really, really good because Bear Tatar, I have that one on as well but it's not really that effective anymore with the nerf. So the legendary boots is king. But you can't have him on a level 120, obviously. So you got to do it on a low level. But it's not needed. You can still push in 10 runs an hour without any movement speed whatsoever. So I noticed that I didn't reset the dungeon after finishing my 100 runs. So yeah, I got Pair to Tar just to increase uh, my speed by a tiny bit. And uh, as I said, any class is perfectly fine for this. And the items that you're after is uh, Shadow Silk that I picked up right here has a pretty good market value it sells really fast because it's needed for uh, for instance the shadow weave mask that still sells really good but you want to get transmit items and you want to get plants and patterns such as star belt lesser parry like a rich purple silk shirt and so on so keep in mind that when you do run this if you do it on a rogue like myself Make sure that you uh, use uh, Shrike and Toss on the mobs, or if you do it with any other claws, just pop uh, any ranged abilities on the spiders hanging the roof to kill them instantly. Otherwise, you have to wait until they entangle themselves down. It just takes a long time. So one really important thing that I want to show you guys is the chest locations, because the chest is like the big gold in this dungeon, because chest has a higher chance of uh, containing blue items, like rare items and plants and patterns. So if you guys are not going to do this on a rogue, do it on a tune that can open up chest with items. Uh, like you need professions such as blacksmithing, engineering, jewel crafting, inscription. Doesn't matter which one, but run it with a, a tune where, that can open up chests. So the first one is in this room and it's always guarded by the spider. So you got to click the chest, wait for the spider to come down or you can just instantly kill the spider. So that was like the first one, like right here in this room. Uh, this... Luckily, no alternative ways of running uh, RFD, so you pretty much just follow the dungeon like from start to end. You can't really do anything wrong. You can't have like a, a crossroad where you can take four or five different ways. It's not like BRD that has, it's a, there's like a billion different ways of running BRD for gold making. So RFD is pretty straightforward. You just follow the dungeon and uh, you hope for big ticket items, basically. So RFD is still one of the dungeons that I enjoy farming the most because it's, it's short, there's a lot of chests, and it's not that hard to get blue items. Uh, even though the blue items have gone down in value, like in the end of Legion, they went down. So here's another set of chests, like right before this boss at the bone pile. They can spawn two chests, sometimes there's zero chests, sometimes there's only one, but quite often you find two chests on this location. And since there's not that many mobs in the dungeons, it's really important that you guys kill every single mob. Even the, like, the small slimes that we're going to get to, we want to kill those as well because they uh, also have like the same loot table as everyone else. Some exceptions though, as these skeletons, they don't have any loot, so I normally just kill the boss and then vanish off. Can't be ours to wait for the skeletons at all. But if you don't have any, uh, any class that can get out of combat, you want to kill them because you don't want the mobs following you around. It's going to prevent you from opening up chests and so on. So definitely kill them off or vanish, shadow meld, it doesn't really matter. 
So we're almost done actually, and you want to kill every single boss besides from the last boss, and that's because it just takes too much time. You gotta wait for like the role play and all of that, and it's just not worth it. It's not like the boss is dropping any specific items. However, it does have the uh, it does have the same loot table as everyone else, so it can drop you a good item, but it's just one mob. It's basically like killing an extra slime, right? So it. I don't consider it to be worth my time, so I'm going to show you guys where exactly I jumped down, so you guys don't have to deal with the last boss. Also keep in mind that these mobs, the Death's Head Necrolite, you want to, if you have a ranged ability, you want to throw a ranged ability at him, because if you run up to him like this, you have to first kill the mobs, and then you have to wait for the summoned skeleton to kill the skeleton too. And you want to kill the skeletons, because they have loot table. So basically what I do is I just like from a distance I throw a, a ranged ability on it and by the time I'm actually in melee range it's going to be summoned so I can kill it. And it's just like simple things like that speeds up your run by quite a bit. So definitely uh, have that in mind if you're running it with any melee class with ranged ability which is pretty much every class at this point. And inside this hut there's a chance of spawning another chest. Now we obviously had a fair deal of chests. So there's only one potential spawn left. So you have the one right here in the spider room. You have the one by the bone pile. And then you have two potential spawn the chest in this circle thingy that we're going through. And, and drew all inside the chest. There's actually two more spawns. One inside this hut, like a potential spawn. And then when we move over to uh, the next hut. This doesn't count as a hut, by the way. But this one over here. You can also have a, a spawn chest inside this one, but there's no spawn. So this is what I was talking about. This is the last boss. Can't be ours to deal with that guy. I just AOE these guys down. And then I run outside of the dungeon, like back this way, right here, the shortcut back. And then you're done with RFD. Super, super fast. It takes you like four minutes when you do it efficiently. Some people do it even faster if you have like a demon hunter with a speed set. But my rogue, he takes like 4 minutes per run, pretty pretty smooth. But what I do is, since I do it in Ludicrous Challenges, I always want to I always wanna do 10 runs in 1 hour. So I don't necessarily want to do the runs in 3 minutes if I can like kill extra mobs in the dungeons, I will. But what I do in RFD is basically I do 2 runs of RFD, and then when I've done the 2 runs of RFD, I go outside of RFD and I kill all the mobs outside. Because the mobs outside actually has the same loot table as the mobs inside. So I go right outside here and I kill all of these mobs. Only takes you like one minute, two minutes to kill these mobs. But these small things matter when you're doing a one hour session, right? So just follow this one uh, clockwise. You guys can see there's quite a, a big amount of mobs outside. So once you've killed all of these mobs which are like outside, you guys can see the dots, just follow the dots, there's mobs on all these dots before RFD. Once you've done that, you just reset dungeon and go back into RFD, do two more runs, then kill the mobs outside, because by that time the mobs outside will have spawned, and then you just rinse and repeat, really really good. But now we're gonna go into like the juicy loot, right? I did a hundred runs of this dungeon, and uh, now we're gonna take a look at the loot. So this is basically the loot that I'm left with. Now I obviously looted while doing this, so I'm gonna just quickly jump on my mount and vendor some of these crap items, and there you go. So I kinda divided them into green items, epics, and then blue items. So I got two of the Bone Slasher, a Manslayer, Freezing Shard, Quill Shooter, Sky Strike Bow, Fodcast Boots, the golden scale boots, death set vestment. These are really bad, but they're blue items. So I just, uh, I just took it with me for the show, right? I got three epics: the night blade, the ardent custodian, and black skull shield. Then when it comes to green items, I actually got way more green items than this. But the first like uh, probably 25, 35 runs, I sent the green items to my bank because I was like, it's probably not that interesting to see the green items. But I should have done that because the green items, they add up to quite a bit of value. Some of these green items are worth more than the blue items. For instance, the uh, saltstone chest, which has a market value of 51,000 gold. I play in a super high pop realm, so it's only 11,000 gold in my realm. 
But blue items, definitely keep them in mind because there's a lot of these sorts of shoulders, 18,000 gold. And they have really good sell rate, many of these, like 0 0.06, 0 0.04, and so on. So I basically have this macro down here that's called TSM. And whenever I click this one, it will pop up in my chat, like the combined market value of all of these items, right? So we're going to see how much gold I made in 100 runs, which is basically 10 hours of gold farming. And kaboom! 305,000 gold! So basically 30,000 gold an hour in market value. I've done better than this in the past. Pretty much, just think of it, if I got one star belt pattern, a lesser parry, a rich purple, or any of that, I would have had like 200,000 gold more in market value on... Uh, on these 100 runs. So it's extremely RNG, but 305,000 gold, I would have expected a bit more. As I said, I do have some green items that I sent to my uh, my bank tune, but uh, compensating for that with some of the materials that I have in my bag. So like roughly 300,000 gold from 100 runs. It's, I can definitely do better than this. I'm gonna do 100 runs of every single farmable dungeon. And then uh, you never know, I might go back to RFD and see if I can beat the 305,000 gold. I'm not sure what you guys feel about that, but I'm pretty much going to do like every single dungeon in Classic that I know is farmable. So 100 runs of every single dungeon. For instance, I never farm uh, like this Stockade, right? But I still want to do 100 runs of Stockade. Just because I think it's interesting to see if I do 100 runs of stockades, how much gold will it really make me, right? I know it's not going to be insane, but it might surprise me. And then I'm going to move over to like the Burning Crusade. Burning Crusade is really interesting and do 100 runs of each Burning Crusade dungeon. Uh, but then I'm like debating, should I go back and like see if I can beat my numbers? I'm not sure if you guys are interested in seeing it again. Like, how much will I get the second time I do 100 runs of RFD? Let me know what you guys think about that. And hopefully you guys enjoy these series. And uh, that's pretty much it. So remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you all in tomorrow's video. Until then, bye-bye.